the people in our community, the really disadvantaged are in our communities, and able to understand what HIV AIDS is all about. And I did, indeed, when it comes to vaccines, they want to know what is happening there. The second one was uh, the issue of taking pictures of people with HIV AIDS during interviews. I have my views there, but that one we can take up with you if you want, uh, privately. The third one was on the relationship between AIDS vaccines and other prevention strategies, and uh, I think part of it has been alluded to by Dr. Talibu, and in particular the outcome of uh, the Pabili uh, study with respect to circumcised and non-circumcised living world. Because I was a, a member of the uh, investigation team for male circumcision to reduce HIV uh, incidents, which was being conducted in Kisumu. And again, that one we can discuss outside of this presentation, maybe during one of the breaks. Uh, my presentation is going to be fairly basic, uh, at least for some of you, because there are people within this audience that I know, uh, they are in the, in the profession of journalism but they are also quite well versed in biological sciences. So forgive me if you find me being a little too simplistic in my presentation. But what I'll attempt to do is to provide a definition of what vaccines are, the origins of the science of vaccination, the types of vaccines that we have uh, in use, and uh, I'll do a little bit over the uh, stories of successful outcomes of vaccination programs. Uh, talk a little on side effects of vaccines because uh, any biological product must also have some side effects. And uh, finally, I want to look at the rationale for HIV vaccine research. And uh, that will also include some of the challenges that Pontiano uh, uh, mentioned in his presentation. And I do hope I don't overlap too much. Now, this is what I would call the uh, enlarged definition of vaccine, and I'm calling it enlarged because uh, it is more descriptive than uh, you know, just uh, saying a few words which definitions usually consist of. But a vaccine is regarded as any of these preparations which can be injected into humans or animals and will help create an effect that minimizes the spread or the, the, um, uh, the acquisition of infectious uh, organisms. It can be either, it can be a kiln, which we also refer to as inactivated, a whole organism. It can be a weakened organism and these are also referred to as attenuated. In other words, they are being treated in such a manner that they are still capable of, uh, of making our bodies react as if it was natural infection. But because their ability to cause disease has been reduced, uh, they don't proceed and cause the worst disease, but instead they mimic or they uh, uh, prepare the body to be able to combat the real enemy if it came into the body. The other approach is to use what we call toxoids. A toxoid is usually derived from some of the toxins produced, particularly by bacteria. Toxo toxins are those uh, chemical products of bacteria which are themselves uh, responsible for some of the conditions that we associate with uh, infection with such organisms. And if you treat these toxins in such a manner that you reduce their ability to cause, uh, their, their ability to act as toxins, but they are still capable of stimulating the body to react appropriately uh, in terms of immunity, 
then they are now capable of being used as vaccines. The next three are a little more, are a little newer. Uh, the other one is use of parts of microorganisms. For example, if you use the carbohydrate comp components of microorganisms, the outer covering of bacteria, for example, the capsules, if you extract those ones, because you are not going to use the whole organism, you can prepare those ones in such a manner that they can also be used as vaccines. Then we have the genetically engineered parts of microorganisms, which we also refer to as recombinant vaccines. And finally, we have the truly synthetic uh, vaccines, which are just parts of microorganisms which have been prepared through the process of genetic engineering. And all these uh, preparations, when injected into our bodies, next please, have got the effect to create immunity. Immunity is uh, that terminology that was derived from the Latin word immunis, that is to free of body. And the way of creating, the mechanism of creating immunity is to cause the body to react to what would be an infectious agent and get rid of it, either through the use of various immunological organisms. So we can, we can see that vaccines work by stimulating uh, specific immunity. And when I say specific immunity, that means a kind of immunity that is very, very easy to recall in case there is a reinvention, a reinvention by the, of the body by the same or a similar organism. And uh, through them, they induce either the production of antibodies. Antibodies are chemicals which, when induced in our bodies, recognize the incoming organisms and neutralize them. But the other way by which they work is to stimulate what are referred to as immunologically active cells, which are usually lymphocytes, and uh, in particular we are talking about a subset of lymphocytes, which are also known as the T lymphocytes. The other way of defining or looking at what the vaccines do is that it's a substance that, when used, teaches our bodies to recognize and fight uh, in the incoming infections. So you can look at it uh, either uh, by the usual scientific uh, approach, but also the vernacular way by saying that this is something that when administered into our body will help teach my body to react to infections. So we have two forms of vaccines. We have the preventative, preventative vaccines, and these are the ones that you give to individuals or animals to protect them against acquiring the disease. But we also have the other variation, which are the therapeutic vaccines. The therapeutic vaccines are given usually to individuals who are already infected. And the therapeutic vaccines help to modify the manner in which the body reacts to the infection, which is already in existence. So it modifies our bodies to uh, uh, either reduce the rate at which the disease will be progressing or even to reduce its severity altogether.